everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're going to take a look at the Ubiquiti Unify Industrial Switch. I know this switch is a little bit older, but it's the first time I'm getting my hands on it. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You'd find us on Instagram at Mac Telecom Networks. And if you'd like to support the channel, we have an Amazon storefront and I'll put a link in the description below. So the reason we're going with the USW industrial switch is I don't need more than eight ports for this client. We're going to be using the switch for Unify access as it supports PoE++. So now let's see what comes inside the box with the industrial switch. And this is the Unify industrial switch. On the top, we can see the nice Unify logo. And this material is made of die cast aluminum with a black powder coat finish. And I really like the feel of it. The switch is fairly heavy. We're looking at 8.49 pounds. And then if we take this front cover off, we're going to expose the ports. I really like how Ubiquiti added these dust covers for our RJ45 ports. If they're not in use, we want to leave these dust covers in. And these eight ports, they're all one gigabit PoE++. And then we have two RJ45 non-PoE ports that operate at one gigabit. We have a reset button. And on the side, we can see these holes, and this would be used for mounting the switch. And on the back, we have our power input. The only other thing that comes in the box is our power cord to power up the industrial switch. Now let's go back to the computer and look at the specs of this switch. And that's what comes in the box with the USW industrial switch. I really do like the feel of this switch, and we'll either mount it to a backboard or put it on a shelf in the rack. So now let's take a look at some of the specs. Like we've seen, there's 10 1 gigabit Ethernet ports. Eight of those ports are 802.3BT PoE++. The total power supply for the switch is 430 watts. It's fanless with near silent cooling and has a wide operating temperature range, which we'll take a look at. The switch comes in at $499 MSRP USD. And here are our operating temperatures. So with the internal AC and DC at 450 watts, we could go anywhere between minus 40 degrees Celsius to plus 50 degrees Celsius. And with the internal AC DC power supply at 240 watts, we could go minus 40 Celsius to 60 Celsius, which is pretty hot. So these could be used in your attic space or like it states in an industrial unit. A lot of industrial factories have a lot of machines, which makes the environment pretty warm. And we could see that the max wattage for 802.3 BT per port is 60 watts. So now let's go ahead and get it adopted into my Unify network controller and then look at the switch. Now we're into my Unify network controller and we could see the USW industrial switch pending adoption. I'll click on the switch and then we'll press adopt. And this will take a few minutes to adopt and then we'll upgrade the firmware. The industrial switch is now adopted into my Unify controller and it automatically updated the firmware. So at the top, like any other Unify switch, it's pretty much going to be the same. So the overview, we have our MAC address, we have the model, and then we have the version of firmware that we're running. We can see its IP address, the temperature that it's running, uptime, memory usage, load average, and then it has this plenum rated spot. So the USW industrial switch is plenum rated, which uses special insulated cable that has low smoke and low flame characteristics. So this is great if you want to put it into a plenum airspace. If we look at our uplink, we could see that it's on port 10 on my USW light PoE switch. We would see the speed is 1000 and the duplex is full. And if we had any downlinks, it would show up under here. Same thing for the clients. We don't have any clients connected, so nothing's going to show up. And then we could take a look at our ports. We could see ports one to eight all support PoE++. Under the port, we could do per port insight. We could change the name of the port and then we could switch the port profile, which would put it into a different VLAN. We could do a Mac filter allow list and then we could do some profile overrides. So here we could turn on or off the PoE. We could have the operation as switching, mirroring, or aggregate. We could also do link speed. If we need to hard code a speed, we could do that. By default, it's set to auto negotiate. Under the settings, we could give the switch an alias so we could give it some sort of name and then we could turn on or off the LED. We also have our services, which we'd be able to specify which network we want this to be in for the management VLAN. And then we could enable jumble frames and flow control. For our topology, we have spanning tree options. The default is rapid spanning tree, but we could have a normal spanning tree or we could disable it. And then we have our priority for our STP. We could enable 802.1x control and then set up some SNMP. Under our network, the default is to use DHCP, but you could statically assign if you'd like. 
And then under manage device, it's the same as any other unified device. Under our tool section, we could open up a debug terminal, which would bring us to a command line interface. And then we could look under stat. And these stats will show a CPU and memory utilization. So that's it for this switch. I'm looking forward to getting to use it with the unify access. And I might do a follow up video to tell you how it's working in a few months. If you have any questions about the switch, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.